have the design done, uh, I'm going to go hit the drop down. You'll notice that I have cam as an option. I have some other tools here too. Uh, if you're using surfaces or want to create some renderings or exploded views to show how things explode and come back together, uh, you can do all of that. I'm going to go to cam and um, let's turn on. In fact, all I really care to see is the base right now. So we'll take a look at that base that we have created. And you'll notice I have some explanation points here. I made some edits to the sketch. So the as far as it's concerned, the tool paths are out of date. So I'm just going to click on that base, tell it to generate tool paths. It'll generate all of those. And I can see as I pick through this, the order that it's going to create the tool path. So um, you know, it does the first pocket, then the second for the slat, down to the back. Um, and you have a number of different, uh, you know, you have 2D adaptive clearing for clearing out a lot of material, a pocket, a face, 2D contour, slots, trace, some 3D options. So, you know, you have a lot of capabilities just built in here. Um, the, preview, the preview is pretty awesome, too. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a totally new setup just to show you how easy this is to set up. Um, I'm going to pick the stock and I'm going to tell it that it's relative stock size and it's not going to add any additional offsets to my uh, part. So I've just cut the part and I, I have the stock just at the exact size that I want. If I didn't, I could offset that out a half an inch. I could give it an offset from the top face. There are a number of things you can do. Um, and it shows me what the width, depth, and height of this stock is, which is kind of nice. Um, you can also name it something here if you want, which automatically helps when you uh, kick off, when you save this out as a post. Um, those things are all kind of nice. Uh, one thing I failed to do is set up my origin. So by double tapping on that, uh, I go back into my setup and I'm just going to say, let's move that origin over here. So I pick the center, tell it where on the stock I want it to be. So I could say pretty much anywhere here, um, on my part, but I also want the Z to be up. And sometimes when I do that, it jumps over. So let's make sure it's in the right location. Y forward, X to the right, Z up. Um, so that's all set up. So now we want to be able to cut out some of this. So let's just do a 2D pocket. And I'm just going to say 2D pocket, pick the lower face there. And we can see that it highlights. I can see it's a chain. I can tell it what tool we want to use. So I can say we're going to select. And I've already picked a tool, but you can come in here, filter out a diameter, tell it what kind of tool it is. Um, I also have a library that I've created and use. So it has all the things pre-set up for me, which is kind of nice. So I have an eighth inch flat uh, two fluted bit. And I'll just hit OK. But you'll notice I have all my speeds and feeds. It comes from my library. I can overwrite that if I want. Um, the, the second to last tab is passes. I usually make sure that it uses multiple depths. And for Walnut, I've been using 0.04. Seems to be working pretty well for my setup. If you have questions on what some of these things are, uh, if you just hover and wait a second, it'll give you a little tool tip and tell you what that is, which, again, being a noob on the cam side, this is pretty helpful. Um, like I, I, I never had cut out anything until I got my Shiboko. So, you know, kind of starting from scratch, going from easel and then coming in here, I would go to the, I'd go to easel and kind of get some of the settings that, uh, speeds and feeds of the different materials feed it into here. Um, you know, it's been really valuable for me to kind of bridge that. And sometimes I still use easel. Sometimes I use fusion. It just kind of depends on what I'm doing. Um, in this case, it allowed me to control the order of how it pocketed everything, that it actually pocketed something before it moved on to something else. Um, so, you know, just, just helpful. So there I, I have that set up. I have the one tool path, but I'm going to delete it uh, after all that extra effort. Let's just get rid of it. I have the one base that I've already got everything set up. So, you know, let's say that we've gone through, we've added all the pockets. I can right click on that base feature and I can tell it to create a post process. Now, in fact, before I do that, um, let's do this. I'm going to tell it to simulate and I can tell it to show the stock and I can hit play and you'll notice that it shows the stock. It simulates what it's going to do. I can speed it up or I can actually watch it real time. So this allows me to see what's going on. If, if I were to collide with any of my, um, fixtures or if my bit didn't have enough shank or you know whatever the case is if there was a problem 
it would actually highlight in red and tell me that there was a problem and tell me where the problem was. So that's pretty handy. Gives me stats on how long it would take to cut this out at my current speeds and feeds and all that good stuff. So that's pretty awesome. So I can simulate that all looks great. When I'm ready to actually send this out, I can right click, hit post process. I can give it a name here, hit OK. And then I can tell it where I want to save it. We're going to go to the desktop and we'll just do a base save it out. I already had the name, so we'll replace it. And that's it. So I, I can create the, the tool paths. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy to, to set it up with your stock, generate your tool paths, create your post process, and you're set from the Fusion side. So uh, once you have all of that, and I'm going to share all of the post processes I have for each of the components I have. So you won't even have to go through that if you want exactly what I have. Um, but if you want to be able to make modifications, you can open it up in Invent or in Fusion. Uh, you can regenerate your tool paths if you've made any modifications and then re-export the posts and you're ready to go. So the next step will be taking it into my Shiboko. So that is our next step.